Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork down for a while. Hi, it's Jackie Cation, and you are listening to the Dork Forest. The website's JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com. TheDorkForest.com if you like a determiner. Let's do the credits. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio and video. Vilmos works on JackieCation.com. And Mike Rickberg uh, sang the song with his wife, Sarah. He composed it, and he will sing his version of the Mexican hat dance at the end of this show. Thank you so much for listening to The Dorks Forest. Here's a scoop. I'm doing stand-up online. A lot of Zoom shows will eventually go back on the road. Sign up for my email list. It's easy to get off. It's harder to get on than it is to get off. And no harm, no foul, if ever bored. JackieCasia.com. Sign up for the email list. You'll find out about my weekly Zoom shows and stand-up on the road eventually. You may donate to the show if you would like. I would like. Sure, I would. There's PayPal, Jackie at JackieCation.com, and there is a PayPal button on both DorkForest.com and JackieCation.com, and there's Venmo, if you like Venmo, Jackie-Cation, oddly enough. If you have listened to all of the shows, go to DorkForest.BandCamp.com, I think. The Dork Forest has a Bandcamp page. You can listen to a, but a lot of ones that are free from pre 2000 nine when I started pre-recording and uh then there's a live episodes that cost me a couple of bucks so I charge you a couple of bucks there's also some stand-up there's a story uh album that's very exciting there and um other than that I have a lot of merch in my garage feel free to order if you need, know anybody who doesn't have any cds or the dvd and uh you can follow me everywhere at Jackie Cation let's get into the show Hey, I'm Jackie Cation, and I am in my living room, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not in my living room. I've lied to you again. I'm in my garage. Uh, that's where things are happening now. It's raining outside. Los Angeles has, has gone into lockdown. My new dog is like, why are we out of doors? What's happening? <laughs> and uh, and with me is uh, LA Comic and uh, Tour de Force. What the heck? Let's just give everybody credits. Uh, my, my father has always encouraged these Dynamo. things. Dynamo. He's a dynamo. Force. It's it's yeah. uh, Chris Fleming, you guys. Chris Fleming, Hi, welcome Jackie. to the program, the Dork Force. Oh my God, thank you for having me, and thank you for making such a clear beginning of the podcast. Usually, people have a very slippery way of of starting them. You know, you get it's like mic in the driveway when you walk up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. like you don't know. There's like a minute and a half of hey, don't forget to donate, folks, and there's merch, <laughs> uh, and then we get into this, and then th and, and like then a we story get about climbing under your porch and stuff, and I don't know <laughs> if I'm supposed to laugh or not. <laughs> oh God, that's right. That's the 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 intro riffing. Nobody needs that. Uh, the door well, tourist. I want to find people, out what you're. What you want to do? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think you're glitch. I'm glitching a little bit. My okay. Say, say, say that one more time. It might be me. Are you? Do, do, do you have an unstable internet? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's it is, but I think but I think it's great. I could I could totally see and hear you, Chris Fleming. By the way, stand up comic. It's at Chris Fleming. Chris Fle was it Fleming Fleming on Instagram? It's that's exactly right. At Chris and Fleming. At Fleming. Chris Fleming because of hilarity on uh, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I think a banker took at Chris Fleming on Twitter in 2011, <laughs> so I had to go uh, to that. Yeah, yeah. watch this banker. <laughs> Lateral move. Done. Yeah. So you have, a, you have a live stream show on March 23rd called Through the Baleen, which is that, uh, which is that thing with whales. Yeah, it's like their hair teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's, it takes place inside the belly of a whale, Jackie. Yeah. Oh, does it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm the doing these, uh, these virtual shows. They're so... Um, they're so grim, you know. So I, 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 I just, I did one of my first one. I decided to take place in like kind of like a Kate Bush type forest, like this kind of whimsical forest. Even though, I, yeah. And then, um, and then this next one, I thought, you know, inside a belly of a whale. And the third one I'm gonna do, if if quarantine continues, is it's gonna it's gonna be called Chris Fleming stuck in a fence, and I'm just gonna be stuck in a fence. I think completely. It like almost just like a your Winnie head in between sort of the fence. Oh, I imagine posts. my body all akimbo, kind of just like oh, interesting. And people come visit, you know, different, you know, and it, that that I think will be the the third the third iteration of my um, 
of my live streams. I think it's great. Uh, Thank he- you. Here's a story that has nothing to do with any of that. Kevin, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Kevin Grady, our neighbor kid, when we were little, uh, uh-huh. stuck okay. said I could fit my head between these two fence posts, and that's what I pictured. <laughs> Because he stuck his head between those two fence posts. And yeah, then we how had long to call was he the there? F- fire department. Fire department. Yeah. <laughs> as you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did it do damage to Kevin's frontal cortex? Or, uh, uh, Kevin did have, I, I don't know. He was working with a full deck uh, right away then. He was an eight year old boy. So I think. Uh, he sounds the, like one of those kids that wears shorts year round, Kevin Grady. Uh, Kevin Grady? I don't. I don't think so, but he was. Uh, I did have a. I had a cousin named Joel, Joel Mushatowski, who used to do something. Ooh. Speaking of goofball, uh, <laughs> uh, young young boys, he used to love it yeah. when my older brothers would pick him up and throw him against a wall. <laughs> okay. <That's> not- <laughs> I have no idea what Joel Mushatowski is doing these days. He's easily in his 40s. What year um, was this? Like, uh, he was... 12th century. He had to be the 70s. The okay. 70s, yeah. Getting thrown against a wall. Was that his way of kind of submitting to alpha males to uh, be uh, part of the culture? Very possibly. Very. He also, maybe he just loved all-star wrestling. We don't know. We don't know why. <laughs> he loved um, being a victim, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I will say, wh- so live stream, how are they going to see this? This you in the in, through the baleen. Do they have to find a whale and sort of tune to that? <laughs> no, no, there's there's a zoom link. They the uh, there's no work on the audience part. They don't have to go anywhere. Oh. I am I am in the belly of the whale. That will be the location. That's, that's excellent. That's the, excellent. Yeah, I, know, I, I I can't ask. That's a good idea though to ask more of people the people to find a waterfront <laughs> and then if you could turn your computer on. But so it'll yeah. just be a zoom link that they can find on your on your uh, on, on your Twitter or something. That's exactly right. If 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 I'm as organized as I'd like to be, I would have that uh, in my bio um, for either Instagram or Twitter. <laughs> I, but I can't imagine I do yet. So um, feel but, free to Google it, out. you guys, because it's going to be a week from today. A week from my, today, the Zoom show live yeah. through the uh, live stream through the Bay Lane. My mom sent me a link uh, asking if this was the link to tickets to send to her friends, and it was certainly like a like a virus link. Like I, oh. she found something that was not uh, at all what, <laughs> what my show. Yeah, is. find so, Chris yeah. himself and go, "Hey, man, <laughs> where is it?" Because I, you know, I do a show every Sunday, uh, uh, Sunday comedy do services. You? Yeah, yeah, just a Zoom show where I work on my new album, and the only way people can find out. Is um is to either be on my email list, jackiecation.com, easier to get off than it is to get on, <laughs> Rangers. <laughs> or if they um if they like see it on Instagram, the poster. Yeah. Because right. because uh I do it the hard way. I don't have a ticket link. I just do um you just Venmo? Venmo me something That's like five dollars. And then the I middle, send man. you That's five brilliant. then I send you a link and then um or PayPal, because some people are international and That's they don't right. have the Venmo. But right. uh, Chris, we've really we've eaten up about five minutes of your dork out time. Let's could get ask, to it. Yeah. Could I ask you one more question about? Please. You're such a great stand-up comedian. When, when you, I mean, I'm sure people have asked you this, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to uh, get it too in the weeds. But do you find the Zoom shows to be bone chilling? Mm. No. No, no. Uh, I found Minot, North Dakota, in 1995, bone chilling. <laughs> uh, I found Rosemont, Illinois, last I think it was December on a Wednesday. That was bone I, chilling. I, I, okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. Some people, some people are like, Zoom shows aren't real, and I was like, Have you been to Victorville? <laughs> Arguably, also not real. Uh, just gonna tell jokes. Hope people like it. <laughs> that's great that's great uh, do you mute yeah, yeah. them do you mute them or do you i don't i don't mute them uh mm-hmm. i tell them to mute themselves if they're doing dishes or they uh, and i say that i that i might mute them or sometimes andy my husband will, will run tech i mm-hmm. said if you don't know how loud you are mm-hmm. you might be muted but don't take it personally. You just forgot that you had the TV on while you were watching my stand-up comedy show, yeah, yeah. which is a lot and not un- unusual. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or if you have like a loud husband or something. Dogs, yeah. kids. Yeah, right. Uh, I live in Van Nuys, which is uh, a great oh, wow. place to learn how to be a helicopter pilot. It turns I got out right trained now. there, <laughs> trained there in tutoring in 2011 to, for okay. SAT tutoring. Yeah, by a very corrupt company in like a 
very. It wasn't my people, was it? Were were, were, were the Armenians? <laughs> <laughs> very Irish. No, this man was very Irish. Oh, those yeah. are my other people. I'm half <laughs> Irish and half oh. Armenian. <laughs> there we go. So, there okay. we go. Yeah. J- uh, the joke is that I was genetically modified to pick up a rock on someone else's property. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. That means old school peasant stock is what it means. <laughs> okay. uh, this doesn't break down. I don't know what you're. You seem super white. Are you uh, sort of Northern European, UK-ish? I get. Um, I read as Canadian, but I'm. But I'm. Um, <laughs> but I'm. I'm. I'm Irish. I'm. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I love that you read as Canadian because that is a wonderful uh, way of putting that. I read as vegan too. I'm not vegan. Oh yeah, yeah you do kind of. I get. My I get hair- a little bit of that. I got in your email last minute. My my reading comprehension is super poor, and I and I just saw that that video was going to be a component. So I'm sorry. I'm freshly showered, and uh, I look a little bit like uh, Trent Reznor right now. Right, you do look a little bit. Here's the thing: it's is I have not showered in uh, about a day and a half, so <laughs> people are getting. Uh, you, but I have the filter on Zoom so that it it's it's so far to the right that it removes your nose. <laughs> so uh, it l- corrects all sort of aging processes and everything. <laughs> it just gives you completely blank eyes. Yeah. White eyes. Yeah. That's good. I have this. You you do read as this, and this was one of your dorkdoms. So let's start with it, which is puppetry. You read as a guy who likes puppets. <laughs> I, I like puppets. I'm not a made of stone over here. Um, You're reading me. Would you have read that uh, had I not included that in my interests? Uh, maybe. I would have said, if you've ever, if you, I would have recommended, if you said, I'm going to Minneapolis in early May, I would have said, go to the May Day Parade because they have <laughs> giant puppets that are in the parade. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <laughs> okay. do you like puppets? I God, I, I spend... I think I've spent most of my time at Joanne Fabrics in in my in my adult life. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I make I, what you need to know about me in general, Jackie, is that I I uh, even when I say like the things that I'm like kind of I guess my, my dorkdom you could call it, yeah. I'm I'm not an an authority figure on anything in the world. I know I know so very little. I'm I'm passionate about many of these things, but enthusiasm I, is what I, we're looking for. I'm in, I'm I'm so <laughs> ignorant. I'm so, I'm just like painfully ignorant but yeah no i i make a lot of you know in in my videos i use a lot of i i i stopped kind of um i need to i did characters for a while and then i i mean i still do but like i kind of grew tired of that and so i started needing to like i started like sketching stuff and then being like oh i need to actually build this from raw materials and have this like create this kind of um universe building type of uh creature and so i've been doing that for um, I've been kind of obsessed with that for the last couple of years. <laughs> so yeah. you've been making your own characters, making right. puppets essentially. Yeah. And they're and, pretty bad, but, um, uh, you know what? Uh, I bet you that there's a first draft in puppet making as well. So, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the first, like, cause how do you, so you go to Joanne Fa- fabric and you're like, this is fuzzy. I want to make a fuzzy puppet. No, that's exactly what's right. That's exactly what I do. Like there's, there's all these, I spend a lot of time in the, um, I'll just roam the, 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 the aisles and see if there's something that looks at least like the base of a shape of something that I, yeah. and then I go to the fabric station and the, they have like amazing faux furs and like, so you can make these like hideous little, little fake dogs and things. And like, I made a fake super fruit once uh, that, that I claimed was discovered in Cleveland called the Morton. And I like, <laughs> I, I bought this like, this like styrofoam egg and I like put these little bubbles on it. And, and I took like, you know, three weeks making it, but it was like, I don't know. It's really gratifying. Um, Sure. Especially could, in quarantine. Are you kidding me? I know. No, exactly. I know. That's exactly right. It's something that anything that like, that's why I want to get into stop motion because of anything to kind of fill the. Fill oh, the right. Yeah. Right. That, that stop motion. Are you kidding me? You talk about a clock eater. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That is something that will, that will take days upon days. What yeah. about, um, here's my question. You keep talking about videos. Have we buried the lead? Do you have a YouTube page or a Vimeo? Oh, I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually um, uh, YouTube.com. Uh, uh, 
Oh, if, and it's just search me on YouTube. I actually don't yeah, even yeah. know what I'll the... You know what? I'll find it and put it in the notes because are are you on the video showing people how you're making the puppets and stuff? No, no, no. I, I like to keep those as my filthy little secrets. I don't like to... <laughs> I don't like people ever this know. This is the I... safest space in the world. You're my friend. <laughs> You've socially arrived. And... I like people not knowing. I love the not knowing of it all, you know? Oh, okay. So... Yeah. Um, I think it really comes down to Labyrinth. I think I just became obsessed with the movie Labyrinth. Uh, and I, I think that's kind of what did it for me. David Bowie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There we go. That's yeah. uh, Andy Ashcraft, my fella, made yeah. me watch it. It is yeah. a spooky, weird little movie. <laughs> it is a yeah. weird little movie, that Labyrinth movie. Yeah. I, I think somebody's dorkdom, I think it was Virginia Jones's dorkdom, was that oh. movie. Yeah, I would hope so. I mean, it's 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 something. I mean, the do you have it on like toddler rotation in the background? It's ever? <laughs> do you ever do that? I I watch it like I don't even enjoy watching it, but I have to watch it. It's one of those things. <laughs> like, I, I, it, does that does that make sense? It's like I'm obs- I became obsessed with like why it exists and and um, how it exists. Why these are excellent. I don't even, I don't know how it got made. How did it get made? Someone, That's right. you're in a pitch meeting and you're like, David Bowie's willing to do it. And they're like, okay, we're in. Is that it? And supposedly, I guess the, my, one of my favorite parts of it is that um, David Bowie's manager was like supposedly looking for him for like six months and didn't know what he was doing. And then he like came back and he was like, hey, check this out. Look what I've done. And his manager was like, what have, why did you make, no, why did you do this? You are, <laughs> you're a rock icon. Why did you do this? And he was like super upset about it. Yeah. Oh, and, and it turns out uh, wrong because that, is, that movie oh. is Beloved. Oh, oh, it's so inspiring. It's so inspired. Yeah, yeah. What, what, um, I it's can't simply, remember. It's demasiado, as the Spanish would say. It's simply too much. That's, that's, that's why it's so good. Demasiado. It is too much. Uh, that <laughs> is a great word. Uh, what, so, if I remember correctly, it's about a little boy who goes into, like, a fantasy world, and. A little girl. Just say my, trouble. say you're so there's close. a child yeah, a child exactly exactly and that's exactly right and 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 that's all yeah and she her her oh no no you're right sorry there's a baby boy who gets stolen snatched. by david bowie she gets that's snatched. right that's and you're right. absolutely i'm so sorry absolutely right and then jennifer Connolly, the sister has to go retrieve the boy and there's oh, right. musical numbers that david bowie wrote and there's like live chickens for some reason in a lot of the shots live it's, chickens i do oh, i remember. love Mixing animals with puppets is just one of the most satisfying <laughs> things. The way they look at each other, oh God, it's like, it's so messed up. That's got to be confusing for like the live animal to just come up to like a chicken puppet or an, another animal puppet going, I'm pretty sure there's a person inside there. There's a hand. I can smell the hand. Like that, like that show that was, I've heard about, or maybe I dreamt that this existed about like, People wanted to like study tigers, so they would make like a tiger robot and have cameras in it and send it into the wild. <laughs> and I don't think it like worked very well. Because no, it, it sounds like... it sounds like a first of all great way to lose a robot. I think John uh, Lovitz voiced the tiger. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't. It just John didn't Lovitz. work. <laughs> you got Lovitz in there. Oh my God, you get Lovitz in there. Uh, yeah. the critics are the critics are not going to like it. I'm just no. going to tell you, the critics are going to be a little harsh on Lovitz. I was thinking about everything about like just someone just randomly deciding to write a, like a biography on John Lovitz or something. You know, like you could just do that. <laughs> you could. Matter of fact, uh, someone start a separate Wikipedia page. Just John Lovitz <laughs> 2, where you could just everyone could just add to it. And a lot of people don't know this about John Lovitz, but he was uh, raised to the Appalachians in the uh, 1912s. And <laughs> right. He, uh, I think I heard that he was he, a he was a longshoreman for at least fifty years. I he read got, he initially got work I think with WPA. It was uh, <laughs> they were like, well, we're trying to help the fishing community, so we're going to put John Lovitz in on this. And he was a rascal when he was he was always stealing <laughs> daffodils as a boy. That would be really fun <laughs> just to like write a biography knowing nothing about like Jack Nicholson, just like writing it. Oh my gosh, it. this sounds like something that I would do without any sort of. <laughs> irony where i would be like what no what do i know because uh i think this happened i don't no one told me but i imagine this is the second episode i think in a row that uh david bowie has come up and um that's good and i've always i've i've consistently mixed him up with the guy who did white wedding 
And oh, um, oh uh, uh, Idol. Right? Yeah, Billy Idol. Billy Who, Idol. Last yeah. episode, I couldn't remember his name. And just now, I couldn't remember his name, but I did remember White Wedding, which triggered your memory. Which it took is, me uh, about 20 minutes to remember it, though. It took, that was a yeah, while. It, took, it took a heart. It took, and here's the thing about podcasts is that every second counts. <laughs> and there's no... <laughs> <laughs> it, we could we couldn't make it, but I do. I like every second like, is par, is it tantamount or paramount? What's what's the word? It's tantamount. Is I it like tan, tantamount. Is, tan, is tantamount a word? I, lo- I love tantamount. It's tantamount to to some. It, it's uh, which is a parallel to something, right? It's tantamount to <laughs> saying I hate yeah, you. That's right. Or it's yes. uh, it's a parallel to saying we will marry one day, <laughs> or what? I mean, I don't know, uh, but. <laughs> Here's what I want to know about Labyrinth. So there are puppets, though, because there's real oh, live it's, chickens. It's mostly puppets and David Bowie having to lock eyes with puppets and, and talk with them. Oh, yeah, I'm afraid so. He, he So he rules over like maybe 40 goblins. <laughs> then he just is like he's just kind of bored in a castle and he just kind of this um, – Looks at looks at the clock and just is that tries why he to... stole the baby because he was bored? I feel like that is why demons steal babies. It bored him, yeah. I mean, what it else? Bored him and lonely, and lonely, and they're just like, I just have my minions. Maybe this thing will be different. Uh, right. I mean, I guess I guess it's one of those things that is a lot more nefarious in like a post nine eleven world if you actually like try to <laughs> try to dissect it. But like, I don't. I th- <laughs> there is a reason that he steals the baby. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm so bad at plot. I don't really ever. I'm more about like. No, if I remember correctly, General there's not vibe. a lot of plot there. It's essentially <laughs> no. adventures in babysitting, uh, taking place in Narnia. As yeah, if, that's if right. Re- and, and there's one scene that I watch over and over again um, that was shot on green screen, uh, and it's called. Uh, the song is called Chili Down, and David Bowie wrote all of the music, uh, all of the actual songs for it. Okay. And Chili Down is like these, it's like these marauding, furry beasts, and they and they switch heads and they like throw, they like switch body parts. They're kind of like Arizona swingers, kind of is the vibe. <laughs> and they and they come across, and Jennifer Connelly <laughs> kind of approaches them in the woods, and like. They try to get her involved in the gang and like the it's like a like a hot springs. It's like the people you would encounter at a hot springs, right? <laughs> On vacation that want to talk to you. And it, it's bowl much. of keys. Welcome yeah, exactly. to bowl exactly. of keys. <laughs> and it's um it's amazing. And they sing this incredible song, like one of the best songs I've I've ever. It has no business being that good. It's just like it's just such an embarrassment of riches, the whole film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. I wish I named these shows because we would call it an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> and um, the so and, and the so they're switching parts via puppetry. Like, are they puppet parts? It, 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 I guess the making of it wasn't even actually it wasn't green screen. It was black screen, and they uh, this velvet black that they had to use to shoot because it was so. And they and the they had dancers um, that were that are wearing the different puppet parts, uh, all dressed in black with uh, obviously their faces obscured, and they are they're they're kind of dancing. It looks really bad. It looks okay. terrible. It, it oh. looks like like a um, almost like a Tim and Eric sketch now. But like the way that they. Um, yeah, they like they like manipulate like their their pelvic girdles will come off and switch, and it's just like it's magical. It's it, it's really really haunting, and it, and it really fucked up a lot of kids. Like people, like I guess were very very disturbed by it. It's interesting. Do you know? Do you remember what year Labyrinth came out? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Probably uh, probably late eighties. Okay, I would, I would think. So in for the duration. So um, I'm not I'm not above actually googling it. So okay, um, good. Okay, good. Um, let's, let's guess. Let's guess. Let's talk guess. amongst I, yourselves, Rangers of the Dark Forest. <laughs> you can have your audience fill the space. That's br- <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. I bet it's eighty four or eighty seven. See, and that is interesting because that is those nineteen eighty six. Right Damn there it. in the middle, Damn hot it. spot, sweet spot. <laughs> the median. June 27th, 1986. So I guess it's a cancer, you guys. Or I have no idea, actually. Uh, but um, <laughs> that's, that's the year of the Pekingese, I think. Is that, <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. 1987. That was a year that I was going to so many movies, and really? that was not one of them. Uh, yeah, that was a big year for what, movies. What, what for movies? Me. What movies did you? In the eighties, I would have I would have seen, and I was seeing some real weirdo Magoo movies. Man, I was seeing. Mm. Uh, I I remember Repo Man. I remember uh, uh, that movie, The Shogun of Harlem. Show enough was in the Last Dragon. 
Uh, have you ever okay. seen The Last Dragon? No, no. Oh my God, not. it's it's outstandingly terribly wonderful. It is about uh, a black his uh, a, a, a black uh, kung fu fighter named Bruce Leroy. Okay. So it it, it mocks black exploitation uh, films, Great. Great. and it is a delight. Yeah. Uh, the uh, I think v- Vanity is in it. Veracity? That can't be your name. Why? Why isn't there a dance singer named Veracity <laughs> instead well, of Vanity? Which anyway. which uh, which uh, which dancer are you talking about? Uh, uh, I believe that it was Vanity. And vanity. Uh, again, talk amongst yourselves. This was the what? year. This was the year I was born. Eighty seven. Oh, 1986, 90, you were born in 87? I'm in 87. Because it was yeah. June 27th, 1986, I believe, is what it was. Okay, I wasn't around quite just, yet. Uh, <laughs> You were a twinkle. You were a that twinkle. Was, yes, that was a concept. Um, uh, the Last Dragon came out the same year as Repo Man, because I insisted, I told my friends to go see Repo Man, and it was a hit. And mm. I was like, they're like, Jackie's an amazing, she could pick these indie films. This is so great. The next one I picked was The Last Dragon. Nobody, uh-huh. nobody happy. Nobody oh. happy with me. It was so bad, and also uh, you were the you were the you were the scout. You were the movie scout in your group. People would say Jackie. For twelve see? seconds, I had a glorious mm-hmm. moment because I picked Repo Man. Oh, that's and, all. That's that's yeah. your only. Okay, I see. Yeah, uh, nineteen eighty five is when the Last Dragon came out, mm. and Repo Man. My sister Man, was born that year. Yeah. Oh, there okay. you go. There you yeah. go. And um, and there was this other one called uh, it was uh, it was a time. It was it was it was not Time Bandits. Time Bandits was very respectable indie movie. Remember okay. Time Bandits? No, but it sounds like what I'm imagining is is the concept of Clock Stoppers with uh, uh, or, or or that or that Adam Sandler movie is what it sounds like. Whenever I hear time in a film name, I imagine it's someone stopping time. And the- well, uh, Time Bandits is a Terry Gilliam movie. Oh. Ooh. Right, so he's got all kinds of weirdo cred, uh, yeah. except for I think he just said that uh, he doesn't enjoy uh, someone who doesn't have anything to do with him. Like I think he made a bad. He d- wait, 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 what do you mean? I think he doubled down on some sort of gender or sexuality thing. Uh, was that him? And where you're just know, like, no, no, really? shh, hey, old guy. Shh, no, but I think that was. I good. think that was probably John Cleese. John Cleese every day says something comes where out. He's with doubled some, down where he's just like, where he like uh, doesn't nobody believe asked. bisexuality exists. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Nobody asked John. You're good. Yeah, yeah, John. You're good. It's okay. <laughs> I understand. If you're trying to get laid, that's the only person you should care about their sexuality. That's it. That's just the, the person that you're asking if they'll squish with you. Uh, Terry, Terry Gilliam, man, how can you be a surealist and have any issues with... And he may not. He may not. Progress. This is this is this is a classic. I think we should probably cancel him anyway. I you think. want to just cancel him right here? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you something. Because here, the movies like Labyrinth and Time Bandits, they are super weird, and mm-hmm. people love them. And I am mm-hmm. entirely always confused. I don't know if I am just. I mean, I'm a whole <laughs> person. I'm not going to lie to you, uh, but I sometimes get super yeah. lat- literal. And I kind of like a like being mm-hmm. John Malkovich, beautifully done. Oh, so I such just a great... saw that for the first time. I had never seen that before until like a, like a month ago. I watched it. It's so good. It, it's so funny. I feel like if you were going to give someone a basket of DVDs, if that, if that was still happening, <laughs> I'm doing that. Labyrinth, Time Bandits, and um, being John Malkovich would be great. Yeah. And that weird Mulholland Drive movie. <laughs> oh, so. I, I, my fa- I watch one 30 second clip of Mulholland Drive over and over again, and it's when the witch comes out from behind the dumpster in the diner. Like, the, the, was that in the last 45 minutes? Because I, that's when I left. <laughs> I missed, I missed the no, end of that movie. It's, it's, it's immediate. It's almost, it's like within the first like 10 minutes and it's so haunting and it has no business being in there. Yeah. I think it's cause I saw Rumblefish back in the early eighties as well. Remember Ooh, like, Rumblefish? No, I like the sound of that. Rumblefish. Well, it's, it's based on, on the book. The guy, the, the guy who wrote, uh, that was then, this is now and the outsiders. Oh yes, 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 yes. Um, I like that. I went first to that was then this is now. That's so funny. Um, but the, the Rumblefish movie was, uh, was with Matt Dillon and Nicolas Cage and Lawrence Fishburne, actually. Wow. And Chris Penn and Mickey Rourke. I remember it being with Mickey Rourke because it was by Coppola. Coppola directed Rumblefish. 
So that's a lot of siblings of famous people in that. Well, uh, Chris Penn. Yeah, Chris, uh, well, Chris isn't, Penn. And... Isn't Matt Dillon someone's sibling? No, no, Matt Dillon's, I think he's the, he's the, he's the famous sibling. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but Mickey Rourke was the, was the, was the lead. And Coppola, it was shot in black and white, except, mm-hmm. wait okay. for it. The except goldfish. for Matt Dillon. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, good guess. <laughs> uh, because the goldfish are who you're supposed to relate to. Oh, that's nice. And so it's deep, right? It's real deep. Uh, but I had a, I had a whole t- I had a whole uh, feeling when I said when I was watching Rumblefish that Coppola was sitting next to me, just hitting me on the arm, going, "Am I weird? Do you get it? Am, uh, how, look how weird I am." And that's what I had with a Mulholland uh, Drive as well. Totally, sometimes. totally. It's it's. I mean, I went to uh, school for college for theater, and oh, and I I became very disillusioned. Or I became very upset with the, with how well, abstract you, theater can can get because you can hide behind abstraction. And if it's like, oh, if, if the audience doesn't get it, then like, who's to say it's good or bad? And that's like a really. Right. It's Tough. a great defense. It's a, you could justify oh. yourself all the way to the bank or uh, not the bank if, uh, the bank, if, if nobody's into it. But right. uh, but I will say that that I want I want to like these weird movies, you know, like Labyrinth. Like I see what they're doing. It's yeah. sort of like horror or scary movies. Oh, 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 Do you love I, them? oh, my God, Jackie, I'm that's right. It, that, too, was I, on here. I am a I, I think it's like for me because I'm I have a lot of anxiety. It's like. I think that it's it's like watching a horror movie is like taking my anxiety to the dog park is kind of what it's like, you know, it's like, oh. gi- like giving it something to do while I can <laughs> kind of lo- take a little take a little seat, you know. That is uh, that is epic analysis of horror movies because you're taking it out for a walk. You're you're letting it out you're and, let, and you're, you're bleeding it, it off. Kind of it's if it's not if there's something to focus, something kind of um imaginary or whatever a scenario very clear linear scenario to freak out about that you're that is not you're not a part of you you're yeah you're it's like give, bringing it to daycare and then you can kind of <laughs> take a take a little breather it's so nice i think that's why i like them at least oh that is fascinating i know even though this, i can't yeah. handle them i freak out though i do i have been, I, I if i ever watch scream one, I scream at night. I have night terrors afterwards. I, it's, it's my Irish Catholic thing. I, I, we let it all out. In, in, oh, because I, I, I can't watch anything tense uh, at mm-hmm. nighttime. And I can't read any anything tense at nighttime. I got to read. No. I got to watch something light. Even if it's a murder mystery, it has to be a, like a monk. It has to be like that. It has to be so sort of. <laughs> yes. Doo, 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 doo. You need oh, Shalub someone was in there. killed. You need yeah. Shalub <laughs> slipping on a banana peel. Yeah. Yeah. I get I get that. Yeah. I, I cannot afford to do it, but I do it. And and um, and that, that may just be a destructive thing, but I oh god, I, do you, you you like them during the day horror movies? I can't do horror movies actually at all, but at I can all. do some things that are slightly more tense during uh, the day. Uh, the okay. only thing that I can, I can sometimes read horror comic books. Oh, there and you go. I don't know why I can't read horror fiction because the prose my my brain makes it too real. Yeah. And I can't watch movies because it looks super real. Uh, but for some totally. reason, totally. graphic uh, graphic novels, uh, you, I could I could read Lock and Key. And Sometimes, as things get more like like um, literal, I guess you know, like like um, like with when I when I read The Shining, for example, I'm it's so realistic. I'm like certainly Stephen King has imagined murdering his entire family if he's writing this and has f- fantasized right, about this. Right. It's not hard just to, once either. It's like it's like people I I always had such a freaky thing with Marilyn Manson and people were like you're closed-minded, it's just an act, it's just art and then like you find out like no, he's just a very bad man and that's yeah. like it's hard I don't really know the <laughs> the distinction well, anymore. Right, it is it is hard when you think about someone who has created this this world and you're like oh, do you want that? Is that something you're into? <laughs> right, and, right. 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 I was discussing something like ethics and video games with with my husband, who's a game designer, and um, cool. And he was talking about the bad depiction of of you know th- there's like in Grand Theft Auto, uh, just a real basic thing is that they create Grand Theft Auto. Uh, you can beat people up and right. rape them and and do all kinds of horrible things. Can you actually do that? I think so. And then the, and then there's a, a bunch of video games where you can do even worse stuff. 
that's just out there, like in Linux world, right? Where it's just free form. Oh, and he was and he was talking about um because there's two different philosophies about that. And and that could be true with the horror movies too, is that mm-hmm. does it bleed off the need to do that? Right. Or right, right. does it does it Expire. feed yeah. feed to it and and sort of um not justify it, but but make it normalize it, right? Oh God! And get this: psychiatrists haven't decided. It turns out it could have it could go either way. And everybody. when are they when are they making the call today? Uh, we're gonna get yeah, we're gonna, exactly tonight, we're, seven we're, p.m. Time.is, you guys. Time.is. <laughs> There's a giant digital clock there, <laughs> and we're three hours away. I that is that is I I missed. Um, I missed the whole gaming world since uh, a Nintendo 64 and just okay. how you checked how out. I checked out and, and revisiting it just like through watching it, like uh, in very small amounts, like it's like how, like you need to have like, like your character needs like health insurance. Now you got to like, you got to, you got to take them to the, you get blood panels done there, and everything. There's, there's simpler. There's, I don't know if you remember the candy crush, uh, to, uh, essentially craze of four years ago or whatever it was. I remember because I was in a social security office um, uh, with a man that I was uh, a caretaker for for a little while. And uh, one morning there was a woman, it was silent in the office and there was a woman on her phone playing uh, with her phone up full. It almost was like a Dolby surround system. It was, I don't know how <laughs> she was amplifying it so much, but like every two seconds, it was totally silent. And every two seconds, it would, her phone would just say, juicy. Every like... <laughs> At, for, for maybe 30 minutes. A juicy. I have never understood why people have the audio on at all. I have a Switch <laughs> no. and I'm playing Animal Crossing. Not that much. Two, three hours a day. And uh, <laughs> so I'm also playing a phone game, which is like Candy Crush, which is yeah. just a, and all that is, is a match three. It's just a match three bejeweled kind of situation, right? Where you match what does that three. Mean? Match it, three? Where you, where it's a puzzle where you're matching three colors of whatever thing. Right. In Candy Crush, it's three yellow bananas. Oh, oh so it's like a slot um, machine. You need yeah. to have like, oh, yeah, yeah. oh okay, it's, okay, it's, okay, it's, okay. It's it's a little bit like that. And and so all I know is gambling. I'm just I all that's all. Oh, I know. interesting. <laughs> no, no, and I don't. I don't. Uh, <laughs> but there's no there's no need for the the for the music. I it's and and this of course makes me a monster in general because I don't listen to a lot of music regularly. Like uh the the music We were talking I, about this briefly before yeah. before we started recording. This because is Because another one of your dorkdoms is Wait for it, Rangers, Stevie Nicks, who I just yes. learned was in Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> my, you know my my parents um uh, they we're the same age. They had, no, no. Of course, of course, you're not. I'm sorry, but my my parents. Oh, no, no. Uh, I was actually born to be everyone's parent. <laughs> I've I've been your parent since I was 14. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not at all what I'm saying. But they, that just reminded me no, they no. they they did not know who Queen was recently. I was talking. I, I guess they were busy raising me, but they they didn't. Uh, the I think they they checked out, and my dad's only ever liked two songs that I've played for him. Uh, <laughs> he's only ever commented on, and he doesn't. They don't listen to music. I mean, my mom used to blast. What? Phantom of the Opera, like around the clock, but aside okay, from so when I was young. Okay, so she likes musicals. Um, yeah, but not, not since then. What about what are the what are these two songs? Let's get into this. Chris okay. Fleming, by the way, it's uh, Chris Fleming Fleming on Instagram and Chris Fleming on uh, on on Twitter, and that's wow. how you will find out about his live stream show on Zoom for March twenty third called Through the Baleen. Anyway, Jackie, you are the most professional podcast host I've ever. Uh, I, no one has ever promoted me, uh, done what I've actually set out to do on any podcast except for you. <laughs> You're like well, it's like a it's like a morning radio. Spot, you know that Mar- Mar- Meryl Marco uh, was on the show, and she used to be the head writer of uh, Letterman, and she's written a lot of books, and she's a wonderful person and yeah. hilarious, high yeah. hilarious. And she said that when she came over to the house to do the podcast, I was the only one who offered her a beverage. Wow! I was like, podcast. what's happening? Like not yeah. even a glass of water because I have I have a tiny amount of craft services when people come to the house. Just a just selection of sodas. <laughs> Maybe a beer if you were to enjoy That's, an adult beverage. That could be a um a some gender chocolate, thing. Some cashews. Because yes. any male, I don't think men are very um hospitable. Well, they're not really people. raised. <laughs> it can happen. It can happen where where they're because uh, my husband incredibly thoughtful and and very very good host. Same with and, me. I was raised to be a hostess above all else. I was as yes. uh, the that's my only true skill is being a hostess. But it's but it's a but it's a rarity I think. And and I've never seen it in podcasts. Uh, 
uh, hosts, oh. uh, at, at least at least with. Well, um, get with on men, it, people. So. If you're, I I wrote a thing for my podcast for for my blog when I had a, and I still it's still there, you guys, uh, you guys Tumblr, but uh, I love and Tumblr. it's how to have a podcast. And one of the things was feel free to offer somebody something. They're they're taking time out of their life to create content. It's sort of like the chain of we're all working mm-hmm. sort of for free. Yeah. Like you're coming on here and I'm going to give you a, yeah, yeah, you'll get a Ranger t-shirt and a couple of bucks for lunch, 30K. And, but nothing, yeah. nothing crazy. Like, and then we put this out for free and I could do a Patreon where people could donate, but, and people do, but I have a donate button on my website and people do donate monthly and that's very sweet. Mm-hmm. And then some people just give me, you know, like a hundred bucks a year, live it up. And then other people don't like have a hundred bucks. Like, yeah. like an aunt or uncle just sending right. you. Yeah. Please feel free to, uh, every card you send me, there has to at least be a five spot in it, please. <laughs> and uh, I, even if it's from, even if it's from like a friend, a birthday card, I want there to be a dollar in it. Oh, it's so. thrilling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just I when love, it falls out, what oh, are you, nuts? It's Come on. so nice. Oh, the way it drops. Oh, yeah, it's fun. So who is Stevie Nicks? And why <laughs> do you like her? <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, I'm one of the freaks that uh, prefers her solo career to Fleetwood Mac. I'm not a real oh, big, interesting. I'm, I'm not like a, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kick Fleetwood Mac out of bed, you know, but like <laughs> I, when it starts playing, I'm not gonna turn it off. For but eating it's like, crackers, right cracker? Anyway, <laughs> that's the end of that joke. I can't not do the end of that fucking joke. Anyway, go ahead. It, it's like, yeah, Fleetwood Mac, it's kind of like, it's like, um, Whatever, but yeah, no, Stevie, um, I, oh my God, I mean, it just there, she has, she, so she's like a very, um, she has this great mixture of of dark and light. Like she is rather gothic, I know, uh, by by nature, like okay. very uh, kind of witchy. Um, oh, but her essence is so vibrant that you, that's not like the there's like nothing spooky. There's about no it. death. There's it's no good, death no, there. It's life no. affirming. Well, there's like there's like mourning of the former self, which is something I love. Uh, she she's constantly. Um, what does that I'm, mean? Unless I'm misunderstanding her her lyrics, and again, I have really piss poor listening comprehension. But I, I she's often like she has a whole song about it about kind of. Um, saying goodbye to her, her, you know, her youth, the, the last, that, that version of herself and, okay. and being at peace with that. And the way I just, she has such grace with singing about, you know, love lost, or like even about less if like her friend has taken her lover, she has a song about like, Oh, it's okay. Like, we'll you know, we'll make it through this. It's, I mean, a landslide obviously. And there's just so many, um, she's just such a, a graceful visionary person who, I mean, edge of 17. I just, I just adore her. And, uh, edge of 17 is the name of the, that's one of her songs. That's a great name. Cause it really, it's evocative of what, what the hell she's talking about. I mean, you can tell kind of just by that title that you're like, tell me. Oh yeah. 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 She, um, that sort of, right. She, yeah, I think that one was about John Lennon as a, after he died because she like I guess she was a huge fan of John Lennon. Um, she has some great stories about Prince. She like Prince like while she was on her honeymoon, I guess she she um, was like driving to Santa Barbara with her husband and Little Red Corvette came on, which is a Prince song, uh-huh. and she was like, "Oh, I love this song. I want to like like pull over. I want to like get Prince to." help me make a song like this on her honeymoon. And I guess like the, the legend is that Prince may have like helped her record like, um, Oh, stand back. My, my favorite Stevie Nicks song. He'd like, I guess came in the night and just like played the synth, laid the synth track down in like a La Quinta or something. And then just like <laughs> <laughs> hit the road. And she has this incredible, and she talks about it in concert when I saw her at the forum a couple of years back and she's just, that's oh, so cool. She's just so sexy. She's just like the the absolute sexiest person. She it so it feels. I have to look up um, more of because here's the thing. So when I was first introduced to Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks as people and as a band and as a thing that I should look into, yeah. uh, there was a I believe my guest whose name is escaping me. That's okay because I tend to remember dorkdoms and not. We've had six hundred and thirteen. So right, there's a lot of episodes happening, and so the uh, the the 
but I think that um, don't forget the two hundred uh, that are in the uh, in the vault, you guys. Eight hundred, eight hundred thirteen. And, <laughs> and but the because what I ask people who talk specifically about a certain singer or band is to make me an eight song Spotify list. Oh, that's brilliant! I could do that for you. That's yeah. I would, maybe I would it'll totally be eight different that. songs because I have yeah. to tell you, she did do it, and I listened to it and I was like, oh yeah, I know most of these. But yeah, yeah do one of her solo work. And, or, or even the ones that she wrote. I mean, the ones that she, uh, the Fleetwood Mac hits that are like are particularly sexy. That those that's that's or like, she's just got this like I desperation. Remember, it's just oh my god. I vaguely remember that episode now, and the things that I know. Here's what I know about Stevie Nicks. First of mm-hmm. all, her name is neither Fleetwood nor Mac. <laughs> uh, she no. is. Uh, she was. It was two couples that made up Fleetwood Mac. Correct. She was with Lindsay Buckingham I, in the beginning of its uh, of, of Fleetwood Mac's genesis. I don't know all the fleet. I'm not a Fleetwood well, Mac. Well, and then freak. there was a lot of sexy times that happened with, between different parts of those people. I think every permutation that could yeah could have happened happened. I think right, right, because it was the '70s, man, <laughs> yeah. or the '80s, or I don't know. Everyone was in there. It, it, whatever anybody says that, I was like, was everyone in their 20s? Because I remember my <laughs> 20s, and I was like, what do you want to do? All right, and uh, <laughs> can we use a condom that was my that was my only question <laughs> so that's good that's that, that's great that it, it, it and we lived you guys uh and i lived to tell the story so um but so that yeah i would love actually a spotify uh lineup of such a thing chris fleming that would be kind of neat yeah i would love to do that i mean a little mixtape um yeah that would be also, isn't it what you just said reminded me? Like, isn't aren't the people that like write so much about like how this like about free love and stuff? Aren't those the people that weren't I, even involved in free love? Like, isn't that kind of the whole like peeking through the blinds type of a thing? Possibly. There's always you know the thing about threesomes that's always the one that I was in was incredibly oh, wow. just kind of awkward. Yeah, right. It just feels like somebody's not getting some, first yeah, of all, because right. you can only do so much. In, in Too much in mental situation. math. Yeah. So and 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 I think that there's there's always a feeling of left outedness in yeah. orgies that <laughs> and if you're all drugged up or drunk, yeah. you're going to be sloppy crying in a corner at some point about it. Right. And it just feels it actually feels vaguely pathetic. Now, I, polyamory. I, oh, sounds, that's different. That's different. That right. feels like there's intent, mm-hmm. and everyone is concerned about everyone having a good time. I used to do a joke about how I couldn't have sex with a lot of people because I do want everyone to have a good time. And I'd be like, <laughs> You need anything back there? <laughs> and uh, so this sort of imagery. And uh, but the I, I canceled on a on a foursome last minute. That was that last that round, minute. <laughs> it was I pulled the plug and I said, No, no, it was like 4 a.m. <laughs> Got the call. I said, guys, we're guys, not we're not doing this. We're not, this is going to change everything. This <laughs> cannot happen. Right, right. I remember once. I I remember trying to have a threesome, a foursome with somebody, and it just kind of petered out. Where we just we started it, and then everybody just kind of passed out. Went their separate. Oh, oh, oh. I see. I well, see. I think what we had, what we had done in Minneapolis in every in every in in small in in neighborhoods in Minneapolis in the summer there are waiting pools, uh, in all the parks. Just little little oh, fountainy oh, waiting I, pools. I thought you were talking like in terms that was like a sex term, waiting pools. Okay, oh, I no, see. Oh no, no, I, actually, I it's a it's a way to stop riots. I see. And so uh, the uh, so we the four of us super drunk, of course, we go uh, super high. We go, we wade, we we splash in the pool. <laughs> we come back, and then we're like, ew, we're covered in. The germs of our neighborhood. Uh, let's all take a <laughs> shower. So the four of us get into the shower. And, yeah, and this yeah. would have been the time when it would have happened. Right. But then we all just got out and put our pajamas on. Yeah. So uh, there was we one were night... all nude at one point, though, together. Was that something? Is That's, that exciting? I, I do, can, you can definitely, yeah, you can, uh, on the census. That counts. You can that count counts that. as something weird. There was one night where um, a while back there was... Um, a bunch of men and women, we were at some, uh, it was like a crazy night by a pool. And my and my friend that was very, very inebriated, my, uh, my male friend. And he, um, uh, I don't know if you see my full body, but I am rather feminine. And he, he was very excited the next day. And he was like, guys, I, 
last night I think I took a shower with Sheila and no, that was like, he and I actually showered. That was, that was, that was us. That was us. Aww. Yeah. But, and was it nice? It was, it was great. It was, <laughs> it's an outdoor shower. Outdoor. That's the best indoor showering with a, with another person. You're just like, somebody's cold. See, the oh, thing totally, is, this, totally, I totally, possibly the most least romantic person I know. I try so hard with my husband. He is such a good sport. I get uh, complaints about that. I get, I get the complaint that I'm not, um, particularly romantic, romantic. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I've been uh, it hasn't worked out yet, but I've been working on a bit called affection plagiarism, which is okay. Tell me, tell me, because it's essentially it's when Andy will do something. I'll be like, note to self. Mm. I liked that. You do it back. I should use that (laughs) and uh, as a as something to do. And then, you know, in the end. He doesn't care that I plagiarized it from him because he is receiving something nice and I have possibly learned how to be a human being somewhere in the midst of all that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, it does, it does definitely, um, you know, it is a conflict of IP, of course, but like. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Uh, He will see me in court. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So. Good. (laughs) Good. And I hope you get your just desserts for this. Bio, chicka, bio, bio. That would be my just desserts. Is uh, where we to make sweet, sweet love. And uh, <laughs> uh, I say, uh, no, it would be weird to go back to puppetry now. Uh, but the uh, <laughs> actually, I can't yeah. go to. It, it's always at like minute fifty-eight that I find out that there is something that we could have been talking about for the last fifty-eight minutes. But you did give me a very nice list of things that you'd love to do and you love to talk about, and that's been kind of nice. It's been really <laughs> great talking to you, Chris Fleming. But I don't. Oh yeah, that's. I been feel lovely. like I've done more talking. This is a classic instance of the Dork Forest where I'm like. God, I want this guy to like me. I should talk a lot. You're doing so, fantastic. Are you kidding me? We're I, friends I have, now. I, I don't have think been, you, yeah. I have been completely, completely tickled by this. This has been so <laughs> fun. I have been entertained myself. So, Rangers, <laughs> I hope you guys are having a good time because uh, Chris and I are having uh, an but excellent you're, time. You're doing, you're doing the heavy lifting. So maybe, in fact, all you need is like a parakeet, like a little mirror and some beads. You know what I mean? Like that, because you're the one. I'm not really, you, you are being far more sparkling than I in this. You well, are bringing, you are bringing, you are bringing anecdotes. You are bringing charm. You no. are bringing wisdom. <laughs> well, and I'm just, I'm just rambling a little bit about things. I, I don't, I, I, I have a really hard time. I try to always ask, que- if I'm asked a question, I try to then ask a question so I don't have to answer it. Um, ah. I just started therapy like for the first time. Because I read that Bruce Springsteen didn't do therapy until he was 35. So I, I'm not even that big of a Bruce Springsteen fan. I don't know why I decided this, but I was like, I'm not going to do it until 35. But I just started a year early. And I like, I thought that all I had to do was try to understand other people. I never really understood that <laughs> I had to also understand myself. Right. And so that is a very terrifying thing, new thing <laughs> for me uh, right. to try well, to I think- answer questions, uh, speak glad- openly. Yes, yeah. I, I'm glad that Bruce Springsteen was your sort of springboard to that, even though you didn't, you're not even a huge, like, I mean, I'm sure you're a, a normal fan of Bruce Springsteen, but nothing. Oh, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm very tolerant. Sure. Open, open to it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. How is therapy? Is it, is it treating you right? No, uh, it's not. No, I mean, like it's, Pain it's in the ass. what's That's really stupid. annoying is like, I was doing great. Like, I think that like, if you do enough years of not, of not therapy, I think that that can, you can have make, make things work in a way that is like, sure, you, kind of, you come up with skills. Yes, you have skills. Exactly. And then it's like closer to enlightenment than when you first start doing it. So I'm like in kindergarten right now. I feel like I've, uh, um, become very, very dumb. <laughs> oh, well, here's the weird thing. Uh, so Maria, the way Maria suggests, uh, Bamford, friend, my, yeah. one of my best friends, uh, suggests course, yeah. picking a therapist is that you call various therapists, you listen to their answering machines, and if you like their voices, you leave a message. Wow. Because she's like, because if you don't like her, their voice, uh, she's like, you will have a visceral reaction. Then when you talk to them, you know, he, sort of hear what they're saying, of course, but also sort of listen to 
to how to how it feels when they're talking to you. Isn't it wild how like we try so hard to be like above just like like it just comes down to who smell you like. Right. Who, like what what's <laughs> all these senses. It's we're yeah, it's it's embarrassing to be that simple, but yeah. Well, and, really and, the, cool. and the crazy thing about uh, uh, therapy is that, like, I, I went through therapy back, I think, I think it must have been three or four years of it. Uh, and I was probably in my late 30s. And um, what would I have been? Yes, I would have been in my late 30s. And, uh, <laughs> and it was three or four years. And um, I decided that that I was going to try to be as honest as possible. And she was... You know, right from the get-go, she was like, you seem to drink a lot, Jackie. Have you thought about not drinking? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, no. That's one of my coping skills. Yeah. And uh, and she's like, okay, well then, $90. And then... Uh, <laughs> so, how, do you, how do you get the bird's eye view without drinking, you know? It's like, it's so well, crucial. And, well, and then she was, but I, she was like, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through this stuff. And, and, and if you're willing to do the work, we should be able to process a lot of this stuff. She's like, don't try to make me laugh. I'm not, you're paying me. Remember, I'm not paying you. Isn't that embarrassing when they're like, I know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Drop the drop. It's like, what am I besides that then? Uh, right. Well, that's the whole thing, right? You have to find out what you are. I don't want to know. You know what you are? You're you're a child of the universe, my friend, and yeah. uh, and the universe supports you, and you are loved. So that's good. There's absolutely a nothing. Neighbor, a neighbor to the moon. <laughs> a neighbor to the moon. <laughs> have you watched? Okay, now completely off course. Have you watched a show on HBO Max called Ghosts? Oh, but I like the sound of it. It is a sitcom. It is 30 minutes. It is uh -huh. adorable. And there uh -huh. are only two seasons. And it is British. And they're a couple inherits like this mansion in the middle of uh, England. Yeah. And it is haunted. It has been since cave days. <laughs> okay. And so the five characters or whatever, six ghosts that are living there. One yeah. is a caveman. Uh, yeah. One is uh, an MP from the 80s, a uh, member of parliament. Okay. Uh, there's Lady Button, the woman, the lady of the manor who owned it back in the 1700s or 1800s. Lady, lady Button. There's like a that. Regency uh, poet. Like there's all these different characters. And the, uh, the caveman was there before the mansion. And so he worships <laughs> the moon and he calls it <laughs> Muna. Muna. And it is actually incredibly moving whenever he talks about the fucking moon in the, the sitcom. Moon is, the moon is the best. The, the moon, moon is the bomb, man. I am, I, I do this part of my therapy. I have a grounding exercise every night where I have to kind of commune with the moon and and look at, try to find a tree that's moving a little bit. It's like what I find. Because that stems from one night when I, uh, one morning that I was, I had, an overserved by myself margaritas in new york and then mm -hmm. the next morning i was very hungover and the only thing i'm kind of a, from a very rural place so the only thing that brought me physically like regulated my nervous system was watching like a, like leaves in a tree you know right. and that so i have to do something with the moon and watching these trees and it's like oh god it's the best the moon is great i'll tell you what else is really great the wind oh <laughs> Hell I like yeah. minute, we're at minute 58. We could have talked about things like the moon and the wind for you know what else? 58 minutes. Fog. Oh, wow. Fog. Really? Yeah, what, do you, what do you think about fog? I love fog. How about this? Mm -hmm. L lightning. I like <laughs> oh. thunder, lightning, and rain. You know, people never believe me about this, mm -hmm. but I promise you this is true. My cousin, she can back me up, and she's a Harvard-educated woman. She's not a charlatan like like Hardest me. to get in. <laughs> Easy to get through. Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <That's... laughs> it's just a college. Once you that, get in, you guys, you're doing makes, great. That makes sense. That makes so much sense. I um, but anyway, when we were really anyway, young, yeah. um, we we were uh, the bunk beds, four of us. Uh, the two eldest uh, asleep. Me and the, my my other, the youngest, we're still awake because we're kind of mischief makers. Lightning storm, screen window, Cape Cod. A ball of of light comes in the in through the screen. Right. One and just I, I say, are you seeing this? Yes, I'm seeing this. And then it goes wow. through the room, right over her, out <gasps> through the other screen. Ball lightning. And then we research this. It's like a thing, I guess. Like <gasps> I, after the advent of the internet, we started looking up like and and ball lightning is a is a form of lightning. Wow. Where it's just like a little orb 
that just like shows up and hangs out and runs errands and stuff. <laughs> that is, I have never seen that, but there's something about thunder and rain and sitting on my porch in Wisconsin mm. in the mm. dark and just listening to it and going, all right, I can sleep now. Yeah. You know? And yeah. that's, I think that's why those, those, those noise machines will often have rain and thunder is because yeah. we have those memories from childhood, you know? And stampedes. And stampedes. And then all of a sudden, horses. Uh, <laughs> and battle. Revolutionary. <laughs> I, my, my white noise is just a revolutionary oh reenactment. Yeah. And so you're just like Washington, paddle harder. Yeah. <laughs> and we got to get over this river. Whisper, whisper, whisper. Or just a man, um, a man stuck in a cellar. That's another one. That's another one. <laughs> It's another option. And we're back to horror movies, you guys. Uh, <laughs> Chris Fleming, it has been an hour. Oh, this okay. has been so much fun. This has it been is, a blast. It's been so great getting to know you. Uh, I am uh, I am sorry. But guess what? I bet you I could watch your live stream doing stand-up comedy on Zoom on March yes. 23rd. Yes. And you've named that show Through the Baleen. Yes. Do you like yes. that? So go to Chris Fleming Fleming on Instagram or Chris Fluming on Twitter. Thank you so much, Jackie, for having me. This has You're been welcome. so fun. Thank you. And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?